the bird is free. As with many things these days, the world learnt the $44 billion deal was complete on Twitter. I think that Musk is doing the deal of his life. He's buying Town Square, he's buying power. He's going to be able to decide who's going to use the platform. Elon Musk first announced his plans to acquire the platform in April, but then tried to back out of the purchase. Now that it's a done deal, his first order of business has reportedly been to sack several senior staffers, including Chief Executive Parag Agrawal, Chief Financial Officer Ned Siegel and Head of Legal Policy Vijaya Gadi. Analysts say it's common for a new owner to want to put their stamp on a business, but... It's a little worrying in the sense that when you tear it down to build it back up again, you have to have some sort of a North Star or vision to take people along with to say, this is the reason why I'm doing that. And we haven't quite seen that other than um, some hand-waving at free speech. The firings point to Musk fulfilling his desire to remove constraints to free speech on the platform. He has spoken openly in the past about his contempt for content moderation on social media. Without guardrails on a platform like, like Twitter or really anywhere on social media, you end up with hate, misogyny, conspiracy theories, um, and that's not positive for anyone. That's not, that's not Twitter for good. The big question now is what Musk plans to do with his new purchase. He's definitely going to have to do something radical compared to the, uh, the, the, the way the platform exists at the moment. No question about that. The $44 billion price tag is widely considered a high price for a company that's struggled to remain profitable. Whether it's financial accounts, whether it's you know the ability to access music, news and things such as that, it's not just going to be the same medium that we've been used to over the years for Twitter. If and when those changes happen, undoubtedly Twitter's 230 million users know exactly where to go to learn the latest. Melinda Nusifora, TRT World. Well, let's get more on this now with Daniel Ives in New York. He's the Managing Director at Wedbush Securities. Good to have you back with us, Daniel. It looks like we finally have a deal. Elon Musk, in his usual unconventional style, has all but confirmed that he's taking Twitter private for $44 billion. Is this a good value proposition for him? Well, look, I, from a value perspective, it's a disaster. I mean, he's paying $44 billion for something that's probably worth $25 billion today. But ultimately, he got into a deal he couldn't get out of in terms of the court and ultimately what he faced. And now he owns Twitter. Now, someone, you know, for us, the easy part was ultimately buying Twitter. The hard part's going to be fixing it. A lot of problems on the trouble platform. This is going to be a Herculean like turnaround. Let's talk about that turnaround because compared to other social platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp and Facebook, Twitter really just doesn't have the same levels of uh, user numbers, certainly user growth. Do you believe Elon Musk can turn things around at Twitter? I think he can potentially turn it around, but this is going to be a lot of twists and turns ahead. I mean, monetization, freedom of speech. How do you bring on individuals, let's say like a Trump or a Kanye, but then bring back advertisers? That's going to really be the tightrope here for Twitter. That's been a lagging platform for the last decade. And, and that's why this continues to really be, in some ways, one of Musk's most challenging ventures. Yes, you mentioned advertisers. That's really where the money is here. Elon Musk has assured advertisers that Twitter would not become, quote, a free-for-all hellscape and that it aspired to be the most respected advertising platform in the world. We know Google and Facebook have developed extremely lucrative advertising businesses. Can Twitter do the same? Well, our challenge is ahead to do this, and I think that's really going to be the question in terms of you know, can must balance all this because Twitter's had problems and you're trying to do at the same time that you're cutting potentially 30 percent of the workforce in the low end, maybe as high as 75 percent in the high end. And, you know, I think it's something where this this sounds great on a whiteboard. Now the execution of it's going to be the challenge. And what will this mean for Twitter itself? Do you expect it to still be what it is now? Will it still be uh, basically a, a platform for politicians, celebrities and others? Or do you think it might be more of a, a super app, which is what uh, some people have speculated that it might become? Well, I think that's the end goal. Can it be a WeChat that we see in China in terms of the US? 
Now, I think that's maybe the strategical, but in the near term, how do you bring advertise on increased engagement? TikTok's a massive competitor. Digital advertising dollars are slow as we see even in earnings this week. So that's why this is just going to be, I think, uh, right now, more questions than answers in terms of how Musk turns us around. That's right. And of course, like every uh, tech owner, they, they do want to monetize their platform somehow. But even companies like Mark Zuckerberg's Meta hasn't been, been able to do that with their $20 billion acquisition of WhatsApp, for example. Do you believe Elon Musk will perhaps be a bit more savvy in that regard and make money out of Twitter? Well, look, I'll bet on Musk over Zuckerberg any day. But I, I mean, clearly challenges in terms of Twitter, a lot of investment dollars. It's almost a, an LBO type situation in terms of the debt financing. And now Musk, you know, has his hands full, but also balancing that with Tesla and SpaceX, that's also going to be a 